the savanna posed new challenges for hominids that had evolved from forest dwellers. Here, walking upright had its advantages. Among them, the use of the arms to carry loads and the ability to spot danger in exposed terrain. Miles of sun-parched landscape with the domain of a diverse and ferocious group of predators. And there were few places to hide when they were on the attack. To avoid sharing their kill with intruders, leopards muscled them up a tree. Rare specimens from these hunts can be found in South Africa bones that tumbled into a cave and fossilized. Deer and rabbit are among the most common fossilized remains here. But evidence of a new man-ape was also recovered. The fossils of Paranthropus robustus, or robust almost man, a hominid that appeared two million years after Lucy. In the back of its skull were two enormous puncture marks. The holes are a perfect match with the fangs of a leopard's jaw from that era. Even solidly built hominids like this one were not immune from attack. The size and shape of the brain somewhat resemble a gorilla's and weigh about the same as Lucy's, just over a pound. But other features of the skull are more human looking. Alongside the ancient hominid, paleontologists recovered artifacts never seen in Lucy's era. stone tools. The accepted theory is that only after the brain had enlarged and intelligence developed could hominids fashion tools out of stone. But with its still primitive sized brain was Paranthropus robustus a tool maker? For Dr. Sussman the answer may not lie with the brain but in the anatomy of the hands. Animals that have this metacarpal head and these added muscles that we find in humans and presumably in these early human ancestors, these animals are able to do what humans and presumably our early ancestors could do, namely pick up an object between the thumb and the fingers, pick up an object with a refined precision grasp. Chimpanzees and gorillas, when they similarly grasp small objects, they grasp them between the edge of the thumb and the side of the index finger in a very less effective precision type grasp. So chimpanzees and gorillas pick up small objects like this. Humans, and presumably our early ancestors who had these additional muscles, pick up small objects not like a chimpanzee, but in a more advanced precision way where the thumb is opposed to the other fingers. So here we have an ape-type precision grasp, and here we have a human-type precision grasp. They're very different, and the two types of grasp reflect this primitive morphology, in the case of a chimpanzee, and the more advanced morphology in the case of a modern human or a human ancestor. This is the hand of Paranthropus robustus. Like a modern human's, his thumb bone is thick, indicating well-developed muscles. It is also splayed. These signs tell Sussman that tool-making was within reach. To pick up a small object, humans use the tips of our thumbs and forefingers. Though we do it unconsciously, 
This movement requires precise control. With long slender hands and a narrow thumb, it's doubtful that Lucy's family were toolmakers, though they may have used them. Their bones look more like chimpanzees than modern humans. The chimpanzees' thumbs are disproportionately short and thinner than their fingers, with very little muscle tone. With hands like hooks, Chimpanzees are not dexterous enough with their thumbs to retrieve and manipulate small objects, and it's likely that Lucy fared no better. Dr. Sussman believes that with the evolution of fully opposable thumbs, Paranthropus robustus became one of the planet's first toolmakers. Lucy's arrival three million years ago marked a turning point in history. No longer dependent on forelimbs for walking or swinging through the treetops, our hominid ancestors used their hands to gather food, work with tools, and perhaps even to communicate with others. Homo erectus skeletons uncovered on Planet of Life.